Now, this lesson is still under lesson four. However, this is an extension of data presentation because there is a special type of tabular and graphical presentation. It is the frequency distribution table and its corresponding histogram. So before we start, here are our objectives for today. So let's first start with FDT or frequency distribution table. Fre a frequency distribution table or FDT is a presentation containing non-overlapping categories or classes of frequencies or counts of the observation falling into categories or classes. This is an example of the scores of 30 students in their statistics 30 item quiz. Take note that this table is still in an ungrouped form. To better represent the data, I just place them in the table. The first column represents the student number, while the second column represents the score for each student. So the first step, the first step, you have to identify the largest data or the maximum. So in our table, as you can see here, 1 to 30 students, the maximum score is 25. Next, we need to identify the smallest data value or the minimum. In our table, the minimum score or the minimum value is 4. So now we, we have identified the max, which is 25, and then we have identified the mean, which is 4. So after identifying the minimum and the maximum, we are going to compute for the range. Now, range is computed as maximum minus minimum, recalling that the range is the difference between the maximum and the minimum as described earlier in the terms. So you just subtract the maximum, 25, minus the minimum, 4. So 25 minus 4, our range would be 21. The second step is to determine the number of classes K. The reason why we need to determine the number of classes, because the number of classes will determine how many rows your table will have. So your number of classes is computed as n raised to 1 half, or in other mathematical terms, that's the square root of n. So your n is the total number of observations in the data set. In our given table, we can see there that we have how many students? 30. So total number of observations is 30. After that, we round off k to the nearest whole number. So your k would be 30 raised to 1 half or the square root of 30. That's equivalent to 5.477 5 up to 751. Remember this, you have to round off this number into a whole number. The reason is because we cannot have a 5.477 number of rows in your table. So to be sure that all of your data will be included, make sure to round up your number, not round off. Okay, so round up your number if you have 5.4, rounding it up to the next whole number you have there, 6. So your number of classes will be 6. The third step is to calculate the class size. Now your class size will determine the range of the values for each row. Okay, that's denoted by C. Using C is equal to R over K. So you're going to divide your range and your number of classes. You're going to do 21 divided by 6, which is equal to 3.5. Same as with the rule kanina, sa number of classes natin, we have to round up the number. So rounded off, we have C or your class size being 4. The fourth step is to construct the classes or the class intervals. So a class interval is defined by a lower limit and an upper limit. So the lower limit is usually the minimum of the data set. However, it can also be any number below the minimum. In our example, the lower limit is 4. To determine the next lower limit, you have to add the class size. So you have there 4. Our class size is 4. So 4 plus 4, that's 8. And then add another 4, you have 8 plus 4, that's 12. Adding 4 again, you have 16. Next, 20. And the last one, 24. How do we know if it's the last one already? And our step two, we have computed the number of classes to be six. So stop at row number six or add the class size five times. To compute for the upper limit, the upper limit of row one, you need to first look at the maximum number of decimal places. In our data and even in our table here, we did not include any decimal places. So our maximum number of decimal places is 
0. Next, so in equation, we're going to compute for the upper limit of row number 1 by looking at the lower limit of the second row, which is 8 minus 1 over 10 raised to 0. Take note that 10 is the only one raised to 0. 0 came from the maximum number of decimal places. So computing for that, you have equals 8 minus. We know that any number raised to 0 is 1. So that, that would be 1 over 1, which is also equal to 1. So our upper limit is 8 minus 1 equals 7. To determine the upper limit of the preceding row, add your class size. So 7 plus 4, 11. Plus 4 again, 15. 19, 23, and 27. The next step, step 5. Tally the data into classes constructed in step 4 to obtain the frequency of each class. Each observation must fall in one and only class. So, ang gagawin dyan, ilalagay niyo yung tally. Next, bibilangin niyo kung ilan yung tally, lalagay niyo sa column ng frequency. For example, you have there the class intervals that's composed of the upper limit and the lower limit created earlier. So, we have 4 to 7, 8 to 11, 12 to 15, 16 to 19, 20 to 23, and 24 to 27. Inner piece, inner piece. Malapit na matapos. After nito, seven slides na lang and then you're done. Wow, hindi pa rin sila tumitigil. Oras na ba? Lunch time na ba? Nangingayo! Nangingayo! I just wanna be done. And they're not yet done! Stop, dogs! So for tally, look at your scores of each student. So we have the first student with a score of seven. Where does it fall? Does it fall between the interval four to seven, including four to seven, or eight to eleven? So it falls under 4 to 7. So write down there 1 or mark 1 tally. It can be also in the form of stars or any other objects. But for here, for our lesson, I just included letter I's or bars. Continue doing that with all the scores up to student number 30. After tallying all of the scores, count your tallies. So for the first one, 4 to 7, we have there 5 bars. So on our frequency column, write the number 5. Next, 8 to 11, we also have 5 bars. So our frequency will be 5. 12 to 15, we have there 8 bars. So our frequency would be 8 and so on. Also, make sure that your total frequency should be equal to the total data we have. In our case, there are 30 data. So the total of the frequency should be equal to 30. So this table is actually showing the completed group frequency distribution table. So, ito lang yun. However, there are some additional columns that we can add to our group frequency distribution table. Here are the following. We have true class boundaries, denoted as TCD. You have their class mark, denoted as CM. You have their relative frequency, denoted as RF. You have cumulative frequency, denoted as CF. Where greater than CF and less than CF. And then you have relative cumulative frequency, which is RCF. So for example, this is the frequency distribution table having, having all the additives. So you have their class intervals, tally, and then frequency. I added TCB through class boundary, class mark, CM. You have relative frequency, RF. You have CF, cumulative frequency, greater than and less than. And then you have RCF, relative cumulative frequency, greater than RCF and less than RCF. So let's go to the first one, TCB. Now, TCB, through class boundaries, can be achieved by subtracting 0 0.5 from the lower limit and adding 0 0.5 to the upper limit to the corresponding class intervals. So look at your class interval in the first row. You have there 4 to 7. Your TCB is computed as 4, the lower limit, minus 0 0.5. That is going to be 3.5. 2, upper limit plus 0 0.5. That's 7 plus 0 0.5. You have there 7.5. That is also done for the next true class boundaries. A simple technique to do. Notice that your upper limit of the first row is the lower limit of the second row. So, copy-copy nyo lang yan. 3.5 to 7.5. Tapos 7.5, yun yung magiging lower limit mo sa next row. So, 7.5 to, paano malalaman? Ano yung next? Add nyo yung class size nyo. 7.5 plus 4, you have 11.5 and so on. For the class marks, these can be obtained by getting the average of the upper limit and the lower limit of each class interval. You have there the lower limit of 4 and the upper limit of 
7. So you add 4 plus 7, that's 11. Divided by 2, you have 11 divided by 2, which is 5.5. So same as with the technique used for computing the true class boundaries, we can also apply it to class marks. So 5.5, 9.5. Notice that there is a difference of 4. So add your class size 4 to the corresponding. 9.5 plus 4, that's 13.5. Plus 4, 17.5. 21.5, and the last one, 25.5. Next, relative frequencies. The relative frequencies and its percentage is achieved by getting the quotient of the given frequency and the total tally. So we know that our total here, since we have 30 students, 30 data, our frequency should also be equal to 30. So your relative frequency, look at your frequency for the first row. You have there 5. Divided by 30, so you have 5 divided by 30, which is 1, 6. Next, for the second row, we still have 5. So 5 divided by the total, 30, which is 1, 6. Next, you have 8. 8 divided by 30, that's 4.15. So that's it for relative frequency. Now we're going to move to cumulative frequency. So there are two. Copy your frequency for the first row, 5. 5 plus the next row for the frequency 5. So 5 plus 5, you have 10. 10 plus 8, you have 18. 18 plus 5, you have 23. 23 plus 4, you have 27. And last one, you have 27 plus 3, which is 30. While the cumulative frequency from below, it's the cumulative addition of the frequencies starting from the last row of the table. So kung kanina, nag-start ka sa taas dahil greater than yon, ngayon naman, sa less than, dun ka sa baba, magsisimula. So last row ng frequency mo, that's 3. So 3 plus 4, 7. Plus 5, 12. Plus 8, 20. Plus 5, 25. 25 plus 5, 30. That's it for cumulative frequency. Now let's move on to relative cumulative frequency or RCF. You also have the greater than and less than. So kung kanina, ang ina-add natin ay mga frequencies, cumulative frequencies. So you're going to add the frequencies. How about now we have relative cumulative frequencies? So this time, we're going to add the relative frequencies. So again, greater than RCF, we start from above. So 1, 6, copy it, 1, 6. 1, 6 plus 1, 6, that's 2, 6, or 1 third. 1 third plus 4 over 15, that's 3 over 5. Next, you have 3 over 5 plus 1, 6, 23 over 30. 23 over 30 plus 2 over 15, you have 9 over 10. 9 over 10 plus 1 over 10, that's 10 over 10, or 1. Next, for less than relative cumulative frequencies, so kung greater than, start tayo sa taas. Pag less than, sa tayo magsisimula, sa baba. Now, let's move on to the next part of our topic, which is histogram. Now, histogram is used to present the data we have created, the frequency distribution table. We can use a special form of a bar graph. It is called a histogram. So, your histogram is created like this. Okay? So it is because the histogram is a graphical presentation of the frequency distribution table in the form of a vertical bar graph with adjacent sides. So the meaning of adjacent is having or sharing a common side. So dito kung mapapansin nyo, bar graph siya pero magkakadikit ang mga bars. Walang spaces between the first bar to the next bar to the next bar. So lahat sila magkakadikit. So, yung x-axis mo, it has the class boundaries. So, kanina, 3.5, 7.5, 11.5, 15.5, 19.5, 23.5, and the last one, 27.5. That's your true class boundaries from the table. Now, you have there the y-axis, which is the frequencies. So, so 3.5 to 7.5, ilan yon? 5. So, ang bar mo hanggang 5. Now, notice that there on our slide, I have another way of writing down the true class boundaries. You can also write it as that form where you have parentheses and brackets. So for the first one, you include brackets for 3.5 to 7.5. Meaning, sa data, kasama dun sa bar na yun ang 3.5 and 7.5. 
However, for the next one, you have parentheses before 7.5. Then, 7.5 to 11.5. Yung 11.5 mo naman, naka-brackets. It's because 7.5 in the second bar graph is not included. Pero ang 11.5 mo dun sa second bar graph is included. So, ibig sabihin pala, so first bar graph mo, you have 3.5 to 7.5 inclusive. Well, you have for the next bar graph, you have 7.5 exclusive or not including 7.5. To 11.5 inclusive. So in summary, we had six steps. We really have five steps, but we have the sixth step to be the additional columns that if asked or if we wanted to add, we can add on our frequency distribution table. First one, determine the range. Maximum sa data set minus minimum. Next step number two, you have to determine the number of classes o kung ilang rows ang mangyayari sa table. So that's n, n is the total number of frequencies raised to one half or the square root of n. Remember to always round up, not round off, not round down. So to compute for step 3, make sure also that your K that you have used is the rounded up version, not the decimal version. Okay. Next, step 4, you have to include the lower limits and upper limits. Number 5, you have tally and frequency. For tally, you just write bars or objects or anything that can represent. After tally, you count your tallies and then you're going to include the column frequency. So how many tallies? And then you have your additional. So that is it for our lesson 4.1, the extension of lesson 4, the special frequency distribution table and its corresponding histogram. Oh my God. What's that? Huh.